Stephen, this is for you. Stephen and oh. I have actually were at AWS at the same time. We didn't know it until just like an hour ago. No, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Stephen, back in 2019, AWS released something called savings plans. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be the thing that replaced our eyes, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it was supposed to be the biggest thing that would it definitely was supposed to disrupt the environment. I don't see savings plans as a disruptor. I see mm -hmm. RI still out there, heavily used, very favored, and I don't see them going away anytime soon. Do you feel that savings plans is the best instrument to go to first versus RIs? Or, and I, I know you're with spot this stuff, so yeah. we're going to be, we'll be talking about that in a second. Yeah. Uh it's certainly a good place to start as you're beginning your FinOps roadmap. And as you're filling in the checks and balances with your team that's going to manage it or purchase a solution that manages it on your behalf. Uh, it is a, it's got a few superpowers and it is a clear answer to a problem that the industry was having with regards to spending too much time making sure that there's utilization and making having an easy button to cover anything running in compute, Fargate, Lambda, EC2, and it also applies globally. So you don't have to be locked in. And Prosperop certainly recognizes that value and we implement that value. But the other RIs, standard and convertible, had an exchange and a marketplace. So customers could mitigate the risk of overcommitment, whereas the fact that there's no marketplace or exchange leads customers to undercommit with savings plans only. So I... La elasticity. Uh, yeah. The yeah. elasticity <laughs> of it, yeah. 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 I remember uh, a year or two ago, and maybe not even that long, there were a couple of companies that were able to manipulate the savings plans for various reasons to do it, and they weren't. it wasn't what it was designed to be. Mm -hmm. But they did it in a powerful way for the customer, mm -hmm. and it was customer obsession. Well, I've got savings plans. I got RIs. I got Spot. Why? I mean, we all know Spot's great to to utilize, but you have to be an expert. You have to understand it. You have to be architect for it, or have a tool to help you with it. Oh, hey! Look, <laughs> did you like that? I did did like you that. like that? Hey, I'm time. a professional. <laughs> uh, sometimes, <laughs> don't you worry. Well, but you know, Spot by far and away is going to be your lowest cost for compute. No questions about it. Uh, the challenge with it is, you know, not everything is a perfect fit for Spot. Right? So we always encourage our customers, first, go figure out what workloads are compatible with Spot and which ones aren't. Right? Leverage as much Spot as you can because you're going to save the most amount of money and you're not going to get locked in for any kind of commitment whatsoever. And then if you're you know, a company of sufficient uh, size, there's, there's going to be types of workloads that fit into each one of these buckets. You really ought to be using everything. You should be using some Spot. You should be using RIs. You should be using savings plans. You should be even using some on-demand at that point. Right? And, and there's really a winning combination that gives you the flexibility of being able to be agile and quick and move as much as you can. But for those workloads that are more predictable, be able to lock in your savings. And then for those peaks and valleys of workloads and the stateless type of stuff, spot instances become by far and away your best, uh, you know, pound for pound, the best way to buy compute. So really, it's, you're going to want to use all of them. Right? And we always like to say, hey, start with spot first because that's going to be your best savings. But then, of course, there's somebody like ProsperOps who comes around, and the two products play so nicely together because it gives you and affords you that luxury. So as you're rumpy, ramping up your spot usage, that's not something that happens overnight, right? Mm. You're ramping up over time, over time. Well, now you have ProsperOps that might be able to fill in the gap there with savings plans in the meantime while you're ramping up. And so the, beautiful, the products play together so beautifully, it's like kind of a no-brainer. Why wouldn't anybody use both of them in conjunction with each other?